Hello and welcome to a short video tutorial of the map on FDEC Flight Instruments. Now I just want to run you through some of the key features um, of the map because um, it's grown over the over the years and there's been functionality that I've added in um, both at the request of uh, you users and also functionality that I've uh, wanted to add. Um, but in general here we've got a base map which is being shown as terrain in San Francisco. Um, I can basic panning, so click and drag in the map. Uh, we can pan around the map, we can position ourselves wherever we'd like to position ourselves. And this is super important when we start to begin to tune VORs and HSIs because you can move yourself around and see the, 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 the uh, locations reflected on the instrumentation. So for example, um, if I just quickly tune up this one here to, uh, uh, I don't know, San Jose VOR, um, uh, and this one here will tune up to uh, a Woodside VOR. Um, so you can get rid of that. You can go back to the map here and you can see immediately there we've got uh, the opposition. You've got our radio line shown between ourselves and the VOR. You can see the two line and the from line. The from line is shown as a dotted line and the two is as a, 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 a solid line. So that's, that's all quite funky, uh, which is, that's basic functionality. Uh, in addition to that, if you once you finish moving yourself around, if you want to go back to your actual location, you just hit this button on the bottom left here, which is the green uh, recenter, uh, and we go back to our actual location. We zoom in. Um, you can see here that we've got a track line that's being drawn. So this blue line is the track line. Um, uh, this simulator is running a, a recorded GPX track of a, of a car driving down a roadway, which I used to test, uh, so you can see it following the roadway. Um, you can change the color of that. Uh, so if you go into the settings, you can change the track color. Um, and uh, well, I'll do it, might as well. So make it red uh, and go back to the back to the map. You can see the, the track line's been shown as well. Red probably wasn't a good color, was it? Because it's the same color as the road. Let's change that. Slightly different. Uh, where we go? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, bl uh, green. Uh, there we go. There's the track line. And again, to jump back to our location is to hit that one. If you want to clear the track line, this blue button on the bottom left hand side clears the track line, and that will start tracking again. So that's the basic functionality. In addition to basic functionality, you can change the base map. So we're, sh we're currently showing the terrain, uh, but if you want to go to satellite and have a satellite uh, overlay, you can do so. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through all of these. Um, these are quite nice. Um, this error box at the bottom, ignore that, because I'm on the simulator. Um, but you can change the base map um, to whatever you want. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to, terrain because that's my favorite um, you can also change aviation overlay so you can see at the moment we're on open AIP uh, but if you want to uh, have US sectionals you can hit that uh, flick back to the map and you'll see the US sectionals load if we zoom out slightly you'll see you'll see them for all of the US now obviously that this is US centric um, I'm from the UK um, but uh, but the US uh, allows their sectionals to be uh, uh, freely downloaded which is what I utilize um, via the map so you can see there you can click around and you can go back to our original location which is there um, and there's different types of aviation overlays um, so you can have um, the, the IFR en route low um, so again you, you've got that uh, and and so forth again I'm not going to go through every single one of those make the video too long but let's go back to open AIP and you can also have weather overlays. Um, so these are all uh, all different types of, of weather. So let's go precipitation intensity. I'm not entirely sure that there's any rain around San, around San Francisco at the moment, so you may struggle to find any. Um, but if we zoom out, we should be able to find some somewhere. Let's, uh, there we go. Over the Pacific, there's some pretty substantial storms. Um, and you can see here, as a good demonstration, our Great Circle 2 line to our VOR is being demonstrated here. So you can see it's Great Circle as opposed to uh, straight away. So again, precipitation is, is shown quite nicely. Um, and you get a precipitation intensity scale shown on the top right there. Top left, sorry. Uh, if we go back, uh, different types of uh, stuff. You can have wind speed and direction. So let's show that. Um, so again, you've got that on the map. Uh, obviously, the... The, uh, uh, the bigger the arrow, um, the stronger it is. Uh, what else have we got? We can change the icon. Um, so if you want to show it as an airliner, we can ch show it as the airliner, and that's quite a nice one as well. And there's other ones. And my favorite one is obviously, being from the UK, is the Spitfire. 
um, and you can fly around the world uh, as a Spitfire, which is pretty cool. So let me just turn that uh, wind off. None. Okay. Right, what else have we got? We've changed the icon code, we've changed the track color. Now, this is the really interesting stuff. This is a brand new feature. Uh, we're going to display live ads B traffic, and we're going to have enable TCAS alerting. Let me change our range to 25 nautical miles here, and then head back to our central location. Let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so, give there we go. There's, there's not a huge amount of traffic around at the moment, but you can see here there's, if we zoom in, uh, there's this aircraft here, which which is, if you click on it, um, looks like it's a FedEx uh, MD-11, 270 knots, 6,000 feet. Uh, because I'm in the simulator, I can actually reposition myself. And I put myself in front of that, we should get start getting the TCAS alert. So you'll get a, there you go. So green is a proximity alert. So it's basically saying that this aircraft is within 10 nautical miles of us and is at our same level or, or a, a level that should, we should be concerned with. As the aircraft flies towards us, you'll, that will change into a traffic alert uh, and the circle will go yellow. So I'll pause so you can hear that in a moment. Traffic, traffic. And then if that continues, we're not going to move. That will turn into a resolution advisory. Climb. Climb. And when the aircraft Climb. Passes, passes us, it will go back to a traffic advisory and then back to a proximity alert. Climb. Traffic. Traffic. Clear of conflict. Fantastic. So that's a good demonstration of TCAS. Let's go to the uh, uh, East Coast because there'll probably be more traffic around in the East Coast at this time of the day. Um, uh, let's zoom in a little bit further, make that a little bit easier. US is huge. There we go. So around New York, I'm expecting to see a lot more ADSB traffic uh, appear on our radar in a moment. Um, it updates once every 15 seconds. And in between the updates from uh, ADSB, uh, ADSB data exchange, it interpolates the position of aircraft. Um, so, um, which is which is quite nice. There you go. So there's a huge amount of traffic in the New York area. So we just zoom in a little bit. Again, this is only within a certain distance. You click on the traffic, that one there, PC12. Uh, what's this one over here? Uh, it looks like a, a Boeing 73. Um, then we've got a CRJ9. And again, let me just give you one more demonstration of TCAS. So let's put ourselves in front of this uh, uh, business jet. Climb. There you go, straight to resolution advisory. Um, let's move around out of, out of distance. It should go to clear of conflict. Clear of conflict. And then let's go back in front of this uh, uh, 7-3 here. Traffic, traffic. And then let it go to a resolution advisory. Climb. Perfect. And if we quickly skip to the other side. Climb. When we get out of range, it will go back to a traffic, traffic advisory. Climb. Climb. Traffic. Traffic. And then we'll go clear of conflict. Clear of conflict. Still shows us a proximity, as does this aircraft here. Um, so I'm pretty pretty pleased with the TCAS implementation. Traffic. It's, uh, traffic. There you go. There's another one. It's it's a uh, it's a true simulation of the FAA TCAS version seven. Um, I haven't quite implemented all of the alerts yet on the resolution advisories, um, but uh, I should Clear be doing so at time. Um, and that's a really, hopefully, a comprehensive overview of of the map on FDEC flight instruments. Obviously, I'm depicting it in um, uh, landscape view here, but it's the same functionality in portrait and it's the same functionality on Android and iOS. So hopefully that was useful. Um, it's given you a little bit of insight of uh, how to use the map on FDEC flight instruments. If you've got any questions, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to, uh, to respond to emails. Um, and uh, if you've got a spare five minutes and you use the app and you enjoy using the app, then please feel free to give us a review on uh, the Play Store or the Apple Store. With that, thank you very much.